All right, Matt. So, Better Ghost Store is over. Yes, I go to September. But nobody's here. <laughs> so, in today's video, we're gonna sort of show you how we get things back up and started, and maybe if we're lucky, a couple guest appearances. So, come along for the tour. So, we're at the Palazzo right now, and uh, it's Labor Day in the US, not here in Italy. They already had their Labor Day. Can't remember when that is. May 1st, Matt says. Um, but today we have something exciting. Um, we're just waiting for an Uber to roll up with uh, uh, a customer of ours from our cheese store in Boston and a friend of a friend. So we're gonna give a little tour here and um, I'm hoping they'll let us Put them on camera um and maybe i don't know maybe we'll ask them what their opinion was because they've been following along on this um uh, youtube channel as well so maybe we'll get to introduce you to them as well uh, uh along with many other things that happen over this week <laughs> i don't know one thing after another it's always interesting here in italy what do you think is new here from the last time you know i'm not positive but like i feel like those boxes of rebar were maybe down here one of the previous couple times they were here. Um, okay, here's the big question on the rebar, Matt, and yeah. we need to talk louder because we don't have our mics on right now because uh, yeah. we're getting ready to do other stuff. But um, do you think, I think they make these. I think they just, I mean, they're just rebar hooks. Do you think, uh, you think our guys are making these or do you think you buy them? We'll take a bet. What do you think? And then I'll find uh, out from I, Stefano. I, I think you buy them. Yeah, okay. I, mean, I think it's not very Siciliano, Siciliani uh, to uh, buy something pre-made. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I think you gotta have they a do. you gotta have a machine to bend it. And, and stuff. Uh, I thought it was also interesting. Yeah, but they can have that. Um, how they are handling the rebar on the corners to sort of reinforce this. So this one um, piece around here sort of ties in along with the ones that are just in there to hold it down. So, oh, that was interesting too, when I noticed that. They have them up high and down low. And I don't know, we had such a great gardener helping us out, but things go wild here quickly. I mean, this is all uh, easy to pull out, but you know, first we gotta still get rid of the rubble. But this was all this was all cleaned and um, sifted dirt at one point, and I think so beautifully clean and sifted that uh, the weeds were like, "Thank you for our new home, the home of old mattress springs," and that's a sink. <laughs> all right, good news. The people, one of the sets of people that I said was visiting us from our tea store in Boston, is willing to go on camera. So you can put in the comments like how brave they are because I will tell you, I, I can't tell you how many people are like, no, I'm not going on camera. So, so anyways, I'm gonna have them introduce you and introduce themselves to you and also um, tell you what they thought about their visit. All right, can you introduce yourselves to our, our followers and, um, and let's start with that, introduce yourselves. I'm Ellie Yoon from West Roxbury, Mass. And I'm Alan Yoon from West Roxbury, Mass. And, um, and so you got the full tour um, and uh, you were brave enough to do it in flip-flops, <laughs> which is good. You didn't ruin any good shoes in this. Um, so Ellie, you said you've been following a little bit of the video, but you got to see it firsthand. What would you want to tell everybody who's been watching along? Well, I think seeing is believing for one <laughs> and you've taken on this brave endeavor, but so much more beautiful in person. And <laughs> to yeah. see all this effort and love going into the place it's just very special i think the biggest surprise was the back and uh -huh. the, the yard and the view and the view from the second floor you can't not you can't describe it, so. that's that's good to know like i because uh, i've seen it so many times that i never know what i haven't told people yet how about you what was well your... from the construction perspective it's just amazing how strong the bones of this place is and you could see how beautiful it's gonna be once the pool is in, and mm -hmm. the beautiful paintings in the ceilings and all the different doors and the hardware. It's gonna be gorgeous. Yeah. It pretty much, uh, you know, it's it's gonna be an amazing venture. And when you're done, 
it's going to be absolutely beautiful. <laughs> well, we can't wait for you to come back and see it. And um, and we went and sat and had a little granita, and you got to see our town from the sort of beautiful. side of the street. Um, so you've already been in Teramina. How would you describe our town to somebody who hadn't been here yet? So different from Teramina, very quaint, lovely, uh, walking to all the yeah. nearby things, I think. Similar to Coolidge Corner and not similar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a much different. quieter vibe. Yes. Excellent. Yes. I'm so glad you found the time to visit. Any any last words? I won't make you stay on the no, video forever. No, just, um, Excellent. Good luck. Good luck to you guys. And I know it's going to be a beautiful thank outcome. Thank you for having us in. Yeah, here. thanks for it. Our thank pleasure. Us. Our pleasure, right, Matt? Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Can you introduce yourself to our um, subscribers and uh, tell us who your husband is off camera? And um, I think you said you would, wanted to sort of tell us your impression of this project. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I'm Jordan Haberach, um, and I met Jen at Curds & Co. when I lived in Boston uh, with my now husband, Zach. And we stopped by to say hi when we were in Sicily, absolutely inspired by the Curds & Co. Sicily trip uh, to have our honeymoon here. So um, yeah, I think just my overall impression is that I'm so excited for the space to be used in a multi-purpose way. I think when I first heard um, from Jen about the project was, I assumed it would just be, you know, a giant house for her to live in and have all of her wildest <laughs> dreams come true. And so to sit down with her today and hear um, about all the big plans and kind of unknown uh, activities that can be hosted here for the community. You know, like we've talked about art openings and wine dinners and yoga retreats and all those awesome things. I just, I'm really excited to see how it plays out for them. Thank you. I'm so glad you guys like came here after your long hike on Etna and uh, before you head out for the evening. So thank you for coming by. It makes it really special to share yeah, this with you guys. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Uh, this is going to be the first unboxing at our uh, place in Sicily because I have a box of um, something special that we can't get here in Sicily or we haven't found yet. Um, and it's a food. Let me see if you can guess. Um, and here's the thing. I love Sicilian food and Italian food. And for the most part, I have no problems. But every once in a while you miss something and we can't find this here. And um, my daughter, Becky, got this for us as a Christmas gift from this company and we have reordered. So this is, um, and I know this is not the correct tool for unboxing this. So these are bagels and they're bagels from Rome. So, um, you know, it's priority shipping-ish, but not really, like they get them to you within two days. Um, it's from a company called Beehive Bagel in Rome, and they're former New Yorkers, I believe is their story. Um, like I said, we've had these ones before, so I can actually not just unbox, but tell you that they are delicious. But I know we've got a lot of people here in Sicily who follow us, um, and even if you're in Italy, uh, you may want to know about these guys. So we got three dozen bagels. When you get just, I think we just get a dozen last time. Um, they also gave us a little card last time, but because we we're repeat customers, they didn't, which just says you can put them in the freezer. Um, and they don't have many kinds, about six kinds, but I mean, look, look at these. So there's a pumpernickel because we're going to have uh, smoked salmon on bagels for dinner tonight. Sesame, uh, I think they have, they have onion, everything bagels. Um, some plain pumpernickel, which are the onion ones, <laughs> which they're nice enough. They have a cinnamon raisin, but we're not cinnamon raisin people, and Asiago, too. Matt says, actually, one of these flavors is cacio e pepe. I don't know which one I just held up that is that, but also cacio e pepe. Oh, I think maybe the Asiago is, right? It's cacio e pepe, and so they look like an Asiago, but with pepper in it. So super excited. Beehive bagels. Um, but I wanted to just like let you guys see that, you know, sometimes you do miss. It's not necessarily home. I don't miss a specific bagel from home. I just flat out miss bagels. Matt misses bagels. Um, and we bought a few for um, our architect and his family because uh, they're half American as well. Well, Igor's full Sicilian. But... Um, but 
I think uh, I think we're gonna have some happy people here in, in Piedmonte at NAO. So thanks for coming along for this uh, little tidbit in our week of what we've been doing. So bagels are important, but what's more important is that work is continuing. So they're continuing to sort of take this outer layer off. Um, they're going sort of back and forth between removing the outer layer and attaching uh, this mesh. Got it all over the place. They're setting up. Oh, they cleaned up. Look at that. Remember before uh, you couldn't walk out there. So what was once our laundry room will be our bathroom, um, our ensuite bathroom. You guys are moving things along, moving them around, using the jackhammers and, uh, you know, working hard. It's it was such a hot day, you'll see in a minute, because um, I'm going to go on camera and I'm super sweaty and I'm not even working as hard as these guys are. So, um, yeah, they're just uh, slowly working their way up. You can see there's still some white stucco um, on there. They're going to get all of that off so they can attach the mesh to it. Um, and actually today while I'm working on this video, that's actually what they're doing is uh, finishing up some more of putting um, the mesh on um, and uh, yeah I may have brought a few cold beers with me because it was such a hot day it's a hot day I'm back of the house I'm dripping sweat I'm cleaning up you can hear the guys are over there making progress some people would say making noise but I say making progress And now we're going to go over and do some lead testing with these swabs. They come in a little jar like this and there's a no lead detected side. And if it matches the lead detected at the end, well, you have lead. And uh, spoiler alert, not here, but elsewhere, we found lead. We found it in a lot of places. And uh, unfortunately, that means a few changes for us. And I'll explain those uh, later on as we're we're doing this but here let me just show you this swab comes um, already coated in something you just need to get it wet to activate it so I've poured some water in my hand that's it dry and then it's a little darker and it's wet and then we'll speed this up because I have to rub this for like 30 seconds and I just turn and swab turn and swab turn and swab really easily I also wipe the sweat off your face too um, so you can see yay no lead detected this is the walls I was most worried about but it seems to be everywhere else in the house um, so well and uh, a little behind the scenes this by the way is Igor in black and Stefano uh, in the blue shorts um, they're working out remember that electric plan from last week so they're going through that and marking up the walls and see the, the red paint here and, uh, just uh, getting things ready because they'll make a space in the wall before they spray the mesh and attach the mesh on um, so we don't have to go back in and break into that so, and Igor is our architect and Stefano is our, um, our builder and I don't know why but this is one of my favorite phases of construction is walking through um, and figuring out where the electrics go and uh, it never fails. I never get it right the first try, but we're going to we're going to do our best and see if we can make it happen but this time. Needed electricity for those. I don't know where okay. Is it just me or is the lighting in this shot awesome? And uh, we're talking about actually putting in the electric for the floor above because we'll be spraying this whole wall in a second. You'll be able to see it goes all the way up to the second floor. I've shown that before. Um, and we're talking about where to put the air conditioning unit, and um, but it just, oh, just makes me happy. And uh, after meeting about the electric, Matt and I head over to my office. We have got to clean up this mess. It is just very random. Matt's complaining about heavy <laughs> bed frame there. 
but um, slowly but surely we're going to get this room cleaned up i'm going to let you watch the process we got a ton of lights in here and furniture and all sorts of stuff so you know grab a cup of joe and uh, watch us clean up because everybody needs a sideways couch what my mom always taught me Careful with our uh, power washer there, Matt. One of these days, we're, we're gonna have I'm going to power wash something. To <laughs> I'm going to have both power and water at the same time and you know, watch out. If you get out. dirty enough, we can just put you out back and power wash your, you in your clothes so we can wash your clothes and you all at the same time. If, if there's some place where we have water. Video. All right, let's get cleaning. Matt, do you need any water yet? I'm good uh, for now. Okay, it only gets warmer. All right. Is it still cold? Cool. Mm -hmm. of something think built from the bottom up or the top down this isn't the kind we normally use in the states yeah so it's are simple shelving units um, they're very if you're from the US or I don't know if other countries have container stores or metro shelving um, and those work with a round leg and a little black cuff with two parts that fits in and then the shelves sit down so you have to start at the bottom because you have to work your way up. Um, these we got at Leroy Merlin. You remember back to an earlier video we accidentally on purpose call it Leonard Nimoy um, and um, uh, so I like these. We don't really want to invest in a solution, a long-term expensive solution because we don't have a place for a long-term expensive solution for these. Uh, we're just not ready to make that commitment yet. So we wanted something, and these guys will be flexible, so we could use them at any time over the next couple of years while we're working on this renovation. Uh, and they just, Matt, can you show the people at home? There's a whole bunch of people at home things today. The video, it's over there. Oh. Show them. Okay, yeah, just uh, nuts, and nuts and bolts. And uh, some shoes for the uh, bottom of the... Uh... Rubber shoes so we protect the floor we're gonna take out. But to be fair, if we wanna slide it around, it won't go on the tile. Um, okay, so now... I think build from the top because the top's in frame. That'll okay. be much more interesting. Yeah, it will be. All right, probably from here on out we're going fast forward. Well, let's not tell them we're going fast forward and we just work really fast. Okay, yes. Okay. Lightning mode. Ready? Start. Go. Okay, so these are not the sturdiest shelves I've ever seen, but they're getting the job done. I liked it because they were all sort of modular. You just bought the parts you needed. So it's likely we could use bits and pieces of this elsewhere when we're all done. Right now, we just needed shelves in this room. This is going to be my office. These will not be my office shelves. Um, and uh, if I had like a basement work room, that's where I would put these eventually. But no, I don't have one of those in here either. 31 rooms and I don't have that room. Um, but it, they're a little wonky. Uh, even when they were all finished, uh, this this construction should have been sponsored by Butterfingers because I don't know how many nuts we dropped. It's really complicated to get your fingers in underneath the ledge over the little lip, but we did it. We stuck through it and we got it done. Even if it isn't the sturdiest shelf we've ever seen, it'll help us get stuff up off the ground. 
Uh, and now we're just sort of moving all the rest of the stuff. That's part of the head. It's really the footboard of a bed. We're going to move this couch over. Uh, this will eventually get recovered. This is a couch that matches the two chairs that um, I unupholstered. Well, I unupholstered one of them to check out the bones of it. And um, well, we'll bring those chairs over here. Um, I'm excited to do something and make these fun and modern. <laughs> Sometimes I'm going to feel it. Well, that is the crookediest. All right, do you want to tell me what you want? For... I'll tell you what I want, whatever you need. That over by the uh, See? things. Okay. Yep. Bring it to me, baby. All right, so we're starting to stack up our boxes. That was our box of all of our little goodies we found around the house. And uh, just, you know, some cleaning supplies, our uh, pressure washer, lots and lots of brooms and mops and handles. And uh, we just really needed to get organized because we'd been putting stuff in here, but also the contractors were putting stuff in here. And it was just so unorganized. It still needs to be um, sort of micro-organized so we can find things, but... I'm feeling much better about this now. And this is sort of the wrap up. Um, it's about all we can get done. This is what we've been on working on this week and uh, pretty happy with our progress. Hope you liked the little um, potpourri of what our week getting back to work looks like here at the Palazzo. Okay. And now it's way too dark to do anything.